Today, we're gonna try and actually attempt to convert this 5060 Ti dual fan into a single fan. So I'm working on a project right now and I am gonna be doing a build in the Velka 3 case. Look how, I mean, look at, look at this thing. This is, I'm pretty sure this is the tiniest case that you can actually build a PC in. Now you can see the conundrum here. Currently, to my knowledge, the fastest graphics card that will fit in a Velka 3 is some kind of like 4070 single fan that was only launched in Europe or something. And you obviously can't get it anymore, right? So I believe the next fastest graphics card is a 5060 solo, and then a 5060 is just too slow, right? And I thought for sure that at least one of the AIBs would release a single fan model because the, the 5060 Ti really doesn't pull that much power. And it's been a few months now and nothing has come out, right? So we're gonna try and make it ourselves. So then in comes this thing here. I got this from AliExpress. It's actually a OEM Gigabyte RTX 2070 fan. And the reason why I had to get this specific one was because the whole spacing of the cooler matches up with the 5060 Ti, right? I believe it's 48 by 48 squared. So theoretically, we should be able to make this one work. Now, clearly, I don't know, though, because this still has the plastic wrap on it. I haven't, I haven't tried this at all. So in this video, we're just going to see if it's possible. We're, I'm going to, you're coming along for the ride. I'm going to do this step by step. If it works out, great. If it doesn't work out, I'm publishing the video for ad revenue anyway. So let's see what we're working with here. Let's take these apart and see if anything matches up at all. So see, this is what I was talking about, the 5060 Ti. There's even this whole part of the PCB here is actually kind of a wasted space as well. You can actually crush it down to a very small card. I believe Gigabyte actually does have one where the PCB is super tiny. But I can already kind of tell that this is going to be a bit of a nightmare. So you can see that like the inductors here are in between a bunch of capacitors and they kind of interrupt the line of VRMs on the side. So we're gonna have to do a lot of dremeling and chopping probably. So this is actually pretty neat. We can take off this mounting plate bracket thing off the 2070 cooler, and we can kind of put it over here on the 5060 Ti cooler and use it as a stencil to see where we need to cut out. So I screwed it in here on this one so it's solid and not gonna move around. Funny enough, it looks like the RAM actually will work with this mounting plate. But what we really got to be concerned about is making sure that we cut away all the holes necessary to clear all these really high components on this PCB. All right, there we go. So I marked it all down with a felt as best as I could while it was mounted. <laughs> Whatever, let's chop it up and see what happens. All right, so I finished chopping it all up with the Dremel and the disc. Not the ghettoest thing I've ever done, but maybe in the top 10. And let's check. Yeah, let's go. Look at that. Look at that. Now, believe it or not, that was the easy part of the video. Okay, so. We're going to approach a lot of problems now. This this might actually end up not working, but we're going to try our best. Mama didn't raise no quitter, all right? So when you actually match up the holes here to see what's hitting and what's not, it looks like the heat pipes are actually hitting the 8-pin here. So the only kind of two options we got is to heat up the heat pipes and bend them out of the way or desolder the 8-pin connector and move it somewhere else. Which is, I'm much more comfortable doing that approach, so I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna desolder this, and then move it over here somewhere. Okay, it's the next day, and uh, I did manage to unsolder the 8-pin 
without too much difficulty. And then if I put the cooler kind of on here, you can see it's not, well, I mean, the, the, the heat pipes are clearing that eight pin now. So the next thing we got to do is start cutting away the fins to clear all the inductors and the capacitors. Okay. So I'm about six hours deep on this thing. And yeah, there's not even any point in cataloging what I've done because this is like, look at this thing. It's not, this is not replicatable or like replicable. Even if I were to show you guys how to do it, like I had to move the heat pipes out of the way. I had to crush them. I had to drill a hole over here to clear a capacitor. Um, and we're still not even done yet. So if I put this together like so, we're close though, we're close. I, I got it. This side is all, pretty much done. And then this side, I got one capacitor in the way, hitting the heat pipe. And then after we remove this capacitor, I think we're almost there. All right, almost got it. So check this out. So I, I actually can mount it and it's flat and all four holes line up right but it looks like the height delta of the gddr7 to the die is uh closer together on this one than the 2070 so even if i screw this down all the way um and i and i you know put pressure on it take it apart the the thermal paste isn't getting full coverage on the die which tells me that, well, I checked earlier, but like basically these, this bracket here is touching the G7, not allowing the die to squish all the way. Okay, so I think we finally hit the end of our rope on this attempt. Notice I said attempt. Let me explain what's going on here. So these are the, this is the PCB. These are the two coolers, right? Now, what... So you can see I kind of almost got it. Like the, the memory pads are starting to make contact and the center is starting to make contact slowly. So I, I'm grinding away at this, right? And um, I, I'm wondering, I'm like, why isn't this closing no matter what I do, right? Then you can see here on this PCB, I put thermal paste kind of all over the capacitors around the memory chips. Now what was happening was the mem some of these capacitors are higher than the memory chips, which you can see I started drilling holes here on the cooler to clear those capacitors. The, the big problem ones though are these ones right here in between the memory modules. They are at the same height as the memory modules. So what does that mean? Basically on this cooler here, this 2070 cooler, um, no matter what I do, because the memory is raised on the cooler and this and the, the GPU kind of cold plate area is recessed, um, no matter what I do, the capacitors are going to get shorted. So if I were to assemble this, like I almost got it, man. Look at this. Like I was close, but let's say I were to like check that out. I was like, I was, I was like, 30 minutes to being done, but like, and all the holes matched up and everything. But if I were to turn the card on like this, um, it would short out a bunch of the capacitors and blow up the card, right? So there's actually nothing I can, trust me, man. I tried, look at this thing. I was not giving up, okay? So once I realized this, I went back to the stock cooler here. And yeah, I didn't actually see this when I first started, but the GPU cold plate is like protruding past the actual cold plate itself to be able to clear those capacitors. It's like maybe like one millimeter, it's not much. And then to compensate for that, they use really thick ass thermal pads for the memory modules so that the memory modules are being cooled. It's not shorting the capacitors and then the GPU kind of height gets to touch it a little bit. So unfortunately for this video, there's nothing I can do about it with this one specifically, 
but there are a few more 2070 single slot fans. And now that I know what I'm looking for, uh, by process of elimination, I'm going to order a couple of more that actually have um, vapor chambers on them. And then a vapor chamber kind of looks just like this, where it sticks out. That way it can touch the die, but not the capacitors. So not all is lost in this project of 5060 Ti single fanness. So for now then, we're gonna try and reassemble the card back with the stock cooler to see if I actually broke this damn thing. So we gotta put the capacitor back on and we're gonna put the eight pin back on. And then we'll try and fire it up just to see if it even still works. All right, she's back together. The capacitor is a bit crooked, but whatever. Got the eight pin back on too, so let's see if this whole video was for naught. Oh shit, here we go. Oh boy. Oh, fans are spinning. Fans are spinning. No smoking. She's posting. Mmm. Ah. Oh. Well, let's just quickly check to make sure nothing's actually broken broken. So the, the driver installed, idle temperature seems fine. Let's run little test. Start. Yeah, it seems fine. Let's run heaven next. And if this doesn't immediately blow it up, then I think we're okay. Yeah, clock speed's good. Board power draw. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about, man. 150 watts would be perfect for a Velka 3 build, right? Looks like the paste job could have been a bit better, but honestly, man, I'm happy. It didn't blow up, so. The 5060 Ti might have won this round, but the war is not over. So at the very least, after all that, we didn't kill the card, right? Now, I'm not gonna give up. I learned a lot about this PCB having gone through this whole process, and we're gonna order some different shrouds and try again in a future video. Now, it's easy for us tech tubers to just post the highlight clips and make us seem like we're immune to failures and all that stuff. But for those of you longtime followers of mine, you guys know that I post all my failures, every CPU that I kill, every graphics card I kill, every project that I attempt, I take you guys along for the ride. I think it's important to let the audience know that not every idea is gonna pan out on the first try, and it's only a failure if you give up, right? But we also learned that with a single fan cooler like this, it is possible. So then in the meantime, while I wait for the other shrouds to come in for this thing, we can proceed with the rest of the Velka 3. And then the first thing we're gonna do for this build is I'm going to review and tell you guys the pros and cons of this product here from Mini's Forum. This is a 7945HX3D CPU, which is like a 7950X mobile version, but lock it in, stay tuned for that because there are a lot of pros and cons to this thing. So with that being said, join the Discord, support the channel, buy the optimization course, and I'll see you guys in the next one for these two bad boys. Talk to you later.